Welcome to EZTV Presents Tech View, another episode. Today we will learn uh, how to deploy a brand new uh, DNS. So that means DNS implementation from the scratch. So think about you join a company, they have just an active directory, they don't have a uh, DNS server. So they're trying to build maybe new environment, maybe uh, they're trying to implement um, most of the most of the organizations they have already DNS server, then maybe they can upgrade. But I'm just saying, like, if you want to learn how you can um, deploy or install like from the scratch, so think about the company has only the Active Directory, they don't have DNS, and you are going to implement the DNS for them, and and how many DNS you can deploy. So it's based on the company's requirement. The first thing is. One DNS server is enough for serving or configuring the DNS. But if your organization has like, it's a big organization in that case, if you need a redundancy or, or if you need fault tolerance, in that case, you should have multiple DNS. So in this demonstration video, I'll show you guys with two DNS server. So first we're gonna deploy our primary DNS, then you're gonna deploy our secondary DNS server. And also I'll show you guys how you can accomplish this task with two different uh, subnet and two different location. That means what? Our primary DNS server, which is DNS01, will be on our one data center, and our secondary DNS server will be on our different data center in different location. So in this demonstration, I wanna, I'll show you guys uh, one server here, if you look at here, my ELS BPW BA Virginia DNS01, which is located in Virginia data center with the different IP, uh, 192.168.1.4 is one subnet. And we I have another one is in different IP address, 10.15.90.4. And also the name is different. Instead of BA, it has NY DNS and then 02. So that means two different locations with two different subnet. So the first thing is, what you need, what you need. The first thing you need, the first domain uh, DNS server, right? To build the first DNS server. How are you gonna build the first DNS server? Anyway, whatever the DNS server you need, whatever the application you need, if it is a Windows based, you need first a Windows machine. It can be Windows physical machine or it can be Windows virtual machine. In our case, we are using our virtual machine because we have a VMware environment. We created a virtual machine. so. I'm not gonna show you guys actually how you're gonna deploy the VM. That's, I have a separate video. Uh, if you go to my channel, you can see here, um, I have a video like this, uh, how to create a virtual machine. So you can watch maybe this video. I, I, I can yeah, give you guys a link in the description box on this video. And also I have a video, if you have a template on your, um, uh, VMware environment, you can deploy from the template. And here is the video for how you can create a template. So these two video, if you if you want, you can watch, or if you know how to deploy the VM, you can just it's a simple steps. Um, so you, you can just go from there. Uh, so the only thing you need to understand, you need you should have two virtual machine. What do you need to have? Two virtual machine on your VMware environment. Or if you want to implement on a physical machine, that's completely fine, not an issue. So BM means is you just it's replacing the hardware, like physical hardware, right? So BM and on top of the BM you have to install the Windows. That's what I did. So I just I just install Windows on this one, and also I install Windows on this BM. So I have two BM, right, running on two different data center, two different locations with two different IP address. And what I did after I installed the Windows operating system, this is the Windows 2016 operating system, and I open a server manager, and then there is a, some common task after you install a Windows operating system. And you have to do it for each and every virtual machine. It's, it's common task you have to do after you're done with the OS installation. So what do you need to do with this common task, which is you have to open the server manager, go to the local servers, then change the time zone, based on your time zone, whatever time zone you are in, or your company are like located. So based on that, you change this time zone, plus um, uh, configure the IP address, whatever that you desire IP, you're gonna provide that IP address. 
you guys need to take here and then um like this but only one thing you have to remember it's not a regular machine it's going to be a, your dns server right so the first dns server we don't have any dns right we don't have any dns yet so the first dns server this is the ip address this is the ip address of the of this dns server and this is not a dns server yet but we're gonna make it a dns server right it's not a dns server yet so based on our plan this is the IP address of this server, uh, second one, right? This is the second one. And if I go for the first one, the same thing. I have I assign an IP address. If you go to the details or if you go to the properties. Okay. So this is the configuration I did. So um the first domain, this is the first DNS, right? For the first DNS, this is the IP address, this is the subnet mask, uh, this is the default getter. It's based on your plan actually which IP you wanna assign for your DNS server, right? But one thing you have to remember, this server is gonna be your first DNS server. So what should be your preferred DNS? So the preferred DNS is the IP address of your DNS servers, but DNS server is not exist yet. Anyway, it's gonna be a DNS server, right? later on right later on it's gonna be a dns server but it's not but right now you don't have dns how are you gonna fill it up this so you're gonna provide the same ip here see here the same ip it's it's only happen on your dns server but for other client server machines all the machines the ip should be the different say for example you have a monitoring tool server you have a backup server so backup server ip will be different and Preferred DNS server should be the same for all other client server. All other client server same, which is our this DNS server IP, right? But in this case, the server IP and the DNS IP is same, same because this is our first DNS. That's why an alternate DNS is not existing. Also, we have a plan. We're gonna have this one as a secondary one, right? But it's not exist yet. But ahead of like time, we plan already, we select already IP address for our second second DNS server, right? That's why I put it here. If you don't want, you can just remove it. No, it's, an, it's not an issue. Okay, that should be the IP configuration. All right, so uh, you have to do this IP configuration and then make sure you enable the remote desktop from where. So you have to first log into your, uh, log into your, uh, ESXi or maybe BB Center or whatever if you have. So just log in there and create a virtual machine, right? That way you created the virtual machine, right? So on the virtual machine console, you have to enable the RDP because right now I'm using through the RDP because RDP is already enabled. But in the beginning, how are you going to access it? From the VMR host client console, which is through the browser, right? So I know it's going to take time because Whenever it's expired, it takes time. It's better to have a new window and close the old one. It's going to be quick. It's going to be quick now. OK. OK, I'm talking about this window because So you can just open this console, log in there uh, through the BMR. Just open this one, log in the, with this, log in with this, action, control, alter, delete, and whatever. Uh, and then log in here and then enable the same option, the one I'm showing here, same option. Just enable this one. After that, you can, you'll be able to do the RDP. Right now I'm using RDP session. And also make sure you turn off the firewall. It's temporary because later on, whenever you have a group policy, you're going to turn on again, but turn off the firewall is not a good idea, I know, but for a certain time, temporarily you can turn off to do our task. So turn off the firewall and uh, oh, also the first thing is, I forget to tell you guys, whenever you in, uh, deploy a virtual machine and install a Windows operating system, the very first task is to install VMware tools. This is the first task, okay? And at the end, change um, your computer name. So I change the computer name, right? So now what next? Install. So now the machine is ready. 
both machine is ready to install or configure DNS server. But what's the process? What are the first steps to start the DNS server? The first step is to install DNS role on both servers. So I'm going to install the DNS role on both server. How are you going to install it? Go back to the dashboard, add a role, some features, click next, click next, click next. It's pretty simple. And see here, DNS. Okay. Before I do that, uh, I want to actually take a snapshot, uh, screenshot. Screenshot because if something goes wrong, I can revert back. So what I'm going to do, take a snapshot. Snapshot and you can provide a snapshot name. Okay. Before DNS. Installation and configuration. And make sure you uncheck it. Take a snapshot, okay? Done for this one. And the second one, now I'm going to take a snapshot. It's pretty quick. Take a snapshot and description. Uncheck this one. Take a snapshot. It's going to be pretty quick. Done. Well, within within three four seconds is done. Okay, so I'm in the safe side now. I can start. Okay, install the DNS. I'm going to install the DNS and click next and click next. Nothing else. Just install the DNS and install. That's it. And DNS number two. I'm going to do the same thing, right? Dashboard, add DNS features. Click next. Click next. Click next and DNS. So I'm going to install DNS uh, roles when both uh, DNS server. This is the first step to start, okay? So it's installing, we have to wait until it's finished. I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back after it's done. Pause the recording. All right, so um, both DNS is added. Look at here, DNS role is already added here, successfully added. Um, so what we should do first, we should add, just go to the tools, DNS, and okay. Before we do that, I want to make sure the IP address is correct. So, And maybe four, it's a four. And if you don't have this one, it still is okay. If you don't have this one, it still is okay. But I don't have the other DNS server in here, but I'm gonna put it here after we build the other one, right? Whenever the second one is also complete, then I will put it here. But right now, just leave it like that. So IP looks good. And now what can I do? Go to the tools. Okay, it's already I already there, and I'm going to pin up here. Uh, yes, pin. Okay, all right. So open this one. DNS for a lookup zone, reverse lookup zone. Nothing here, right? Because we didn't create, we didn't uh, configure yet. So the first task is whenever you have the DNS role installed for your first DNS server. Just right click on it uh, for the creating uh, the new zone. So the DNS manager, forward lookup zone, under the forward lookup zone, right click on the forward lookup zone and create a new zone. Click next, primary zone because it's the first time. And your domain name. Our domain name is ELS.com. So I'm going to ELS.com. If for your case, maybe it's going to be different. Click next. And it's going to create automatically uh, this file. You don't need to be worried about it. Just click next. And in here, uh, allow both secure and not secure. Click next and finish. It's done here. And in here, I have to do some stuff. What? Name server, right? This is the name server. But I don't have any. Um, 
DNS01 is not the member of a domain. So I have to add it to the domain, then I will change it. So before I do that, I'm going to do one more thing. Uh, I'm going to create a, another new two zone for two subnet because we, have, we are using two subnet, right? Um, whatever the subnet you have, if, if you have a 20 subnet on the reverse to cup zone, you have to create 20 subnet reverse to cup zone. Whatever the subnet you have, if you have 50, you have to create 50. If you have 100, you have to create 100 reverse lookup zone. So I have only two, I'm going to create two. Click next and primary zone, click next. Reverse lookup zone, okay, and network ID. So 192.168.1, it's just a network ID, not the full complete um, address. It's just network ID with three octet. Click next and click next and make sure allow this and click next and finish. Okay, so we, so far we have created one here and I'm going to create another one, John, click next, primary John, click next, next and 10.15.90, that's another subnet in our different location, remote area, which is in New York, right? So click next and finish. And also click that here, allow both and next and finish. Okay, so far we have two, and what the running status. Okay. So now I'm going to add this machine with the domain and it's gonna create a DNS entry here. How is gonna create DNS like this? So when you create with the, this machine named DNS01, right? Uh, okay. It's gonna create like this and uh, you can manually create a host record with the PTO record. So uh, what's the IP address? 192.168.1.1. It can be created automatically when you add the machine with the domain. Plus you can do like this way manually because uh, the machine is not a member yet, but you can create manually a host record or which is called DNS entry for that server. So for and create a PTO record and host. It's successfully added, right? All right. So it's added here. We can do some couple of couple of things here. So for this one, host record is created, and also in here, name server. Make sure name server is here. It's not resolving edit, and you can say ELS.com because right now we have a DNS entry. It is uh, okay. It's, it's found here, and click OK. Now it's showing correctly, right? And June transfer. That's another thing. Um, Allow Jones transfer to the following server, edit, and so we're gonna add it there later on because Jones transfer is gonna allow for um, our second one. Whenever we're gonna work with the second one, we at that time we're gonna add it here. But it's still, if you want, you can add it like 10.15.90.4, right? The one we plan already. It's not gonna show you like this. You can add it like here but unable to re resolve because it doesn't have anything yet. So what you can do if you want, maybe you can have, because I have already uh, for reverse lookup zone, right? So I can create another host I record for this one, uh, which will be um, my secondary DNS, right? Which is this one, secondary DNS server. So I can create a host I record for this. And I know the IP is 10.15.90.4, right? And add host, okay. PT record is created. So in here we can do, in here, name server, properties. Okay, edit, ELS.com, resolve, okay, got it. And then you can add the other one, which one is not created yet, but you can add it here. One, okay. Let's try. Let's try here. Dot ELS dot com. And resolve. It's not, it's not gonna resolve like that way, but anyway, you can have it here. Apply, okay. So I just added here as an NS record plus don't transfer. So don't just transfer to edit. And in here, uh, and uh, okay, you can say 
the complete .com. It's not exist yet, but see here what it says. Okay. So what you can do, we did add 10.15.90.4 4 4 Okay, anyway, if, if we didn't enable the resolve, anyway, we can resolve it later, later on. And also, notification. Uh, actually, you can do that like the later on, but if you want, you can have it right now. Also, whatever you feel comfortable. Later on, you have to come back here and also you have to provide that, that one too. Okay, anyway. Um, authority, okay, it's true, it's fine. So I have created so far. Basically, you just need to add to the NS entry for this. And also, you know, we have an active directory, right? So add an active directory. What is our active directory name? This one, right? So all these three, actually, we are creating a manual entry. 192.168.1.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
uh, our and this one is met. Apply, okay. So, and also, do you remember? Edit ELS dot com resolve. Okay, add the other one to dot ELS dot com resolve. Okay. Don't transfer, modify. Don't transfer to 10.15.90.4. And if you have a multiple remote location DNS server, added all of them here. And click, uh, okay, okay. Apply and okay. So now I have added here, I have added here. And also I have added here. Uh, let's check one more thing. Don't transfer. Notification, yes. You see now. Refresh this one. Refresh. So everything is ready now. Now what do you need to do? Add this first domain control, uh, DNS server with the domain controller, with the DNS, or with the domain actually. So what you can do so you can uh, just go to the server manager and then go to the name and then change and then add a domain ELS.com or click OK. So but it's not going to show you here because it will show you here some uh, issues. Okay, and then you can maybe you can try with just ELS domain name. And whenever you try to add like this way, it's gonna create a computer object here. It's gonna create a computer object automatically. But if you want to create a computer object and in any any other specific OU, then you have to create the computer object first, then go with this option. Okay. Now I'm going to add automatically because it's going to create automatically computer object. So I have to verify with a domain admi administrator. So if you have a uh, administrative user account by on um, your name, so you can use that user if if your user has a administrative privilege access. But I don't have anything created yet, so I'm going to use the default one, which is domain administrator. But it's not mandatory, you have to use domain administrator like this one, that user. TOR administrator at ELS.com. So it's not mean you have to use this one. If you have a user, again, if you have an administrative user by only your name, you can use that user if that user has a administrative privilege access. Okay. Your S access, okay. No. Um, all right, click OK. It's going to take a little bit of time because now on the background is working and it's creating a computer object to the Active Directory OU and the default OU, which is the computer. The OU is computer and it's like is now here is going to create a computer object there. All right, welcome to the ELS domain, right? I'll click OK and click. Uh, we can come back here. Maybe you can check here. It's fresh. Yes, see here. 
the computer object is created by itself. Right? I told you, like, automatically it's going to create on this OU. But if you have to create on, on this OU, then you have to create it manually, right? Click, click new and computer and then the computer object, whatever the name is, right? But now it's created automatically because we didn't create it. So two ways you can do it. So you must restart your computer. But there, before this, I had a um, error alert, but that's fine. Just click on the error alert, click on OK, that's it. And then you're going to get this one. You must restart your computer. I click OK and click Close and restart it. OK, so now this one is restarting. I'm going to see the status of the host now. I'm going to log into my ESXi. Uh oh Again, again, again. It's happened again. Wrong password. All right. So finally, I'm able to log in and this is my DNS01. Let's see the what's the status of the reboot. Seems like it's now powering on and applying the computer settings. Now I will be able to log in, log in as a domain system. So if you look at here, I did the RDP previously and I use what? As a domain, I use the computer name. Whenever you use domain as a computer name slash your administrator that uh, your user. So computer name slash your user, that means you're logging as a local administrator, local admin, local user. But right now, this machine is a part of a domain, so we can use our domain administrator. So what I can do, instead of computer name, I can change it to ELS, that's it, ELS.com. So ELS slash administrator, that means now this, this administrator is a domain administrator. So after it's done, I will log in with this user. Previously, I logged in with the Administrator user, but that administrator user was a local. How I know it's local? Because in here I use the machine name. So whenever you log in machine name with a administrator user, that means the local administrator. But now I'm using ELS, which is our domain name. Then the username is administrator. That means it's a domain administrator. And if you have a user here as a um, uh, administrative user, you can you can put it your administrative user here it's the same way. Same thing. So now it's going to take time. We have to wait until it's finished. So look like the, this is power on. So I can just double click on it and log in as a domain administrator. Now it's logging as a domain administrator. It's gonna take a little bit of time because this login first time and it's gonna create a uh, profile for the domain administrator. It will take a little bit of time. In the meantime, we can see. So this one, this is the second one, right? I'm going to prepare the second one. Uh, check the IP address. Um, this one, so do one thing. Uh, for DNS, I know this is the DNS, right? So the second one, we we'll do one thing. 10 dot 15 dot 0 dot off. Oh. dot and then 
4. And the dot 4, and so this is the secondary DNS server, and secondary DNS server IP is the preferred DNS of the secondary. That's what I, I mentioned here, and then click OK. OK. Maybe we'll lose internet connection. Maybe I'm not sure. Let's see. Okay. Look like it's working fine. Okay. So this is what we have for this box. Okay. Let's see what's oh, it's still taking time. Because for the first time it's logging. So it's, it's creating a profile for that. All right, so it's power on and I'm going to log in again. Let's see how long it takes. So now it's pretty quick because I just rebooted one more time. Okay, so everything looks good for uh, DNS 02 and DNS 01 is just power on and I just need to go to the uh, server manager again. Server is loading automatically. So I need to access a DNS manager. So it's in under tools, DNS manager. Uh, because previously I pin it up with the local administrator. Now I log in as a domain administrator, that's why it's not here. So I'm going to pin it up again. All right, so it's open. I'm going to pin to taskbar. So later on, I don't need to have it. Okay, anyway. So now, if you look at here, it shows everything, right? Everything is set here. Don't transfer. Uh, only I have to set it uh, after I add the other one. Okay. So let's. This one is complete. DNS zero one is complete now. DNS zero two, right? So DNS zero two, we already installed the DNS roles, which is this one. Roles is installed. So now I'm going to open the DNS here. So this one, actually, we can add. The first one, we added a DNS first, and then we added the server with the domain, right? Because first, at that time, we didn't have any DNS server. But this one, we can add. This one, we can add. Because whenever you add a machine with the domain, and it like the DNS will create a DNS entry, right? But the, for the first one, we wasn't able to first join the machine with the domain because we didn't have any DNS. So that's why we first created a DNS, uh, like forward lookup zone and reverse lookup zone, and then we added with the domain. Now we have our first DNS server. So for the second one, we don't need to add the DNS first. We can directly add the DNS server number two with the domain first, and then we're gonna create a zone. So what I can do, I click, uh, click on this one, change, and domain. What is the domain? ELS.com. Sometimes ELS.com doesn't take it. Let's see. OK. You can say ELS. OK. It should be for the client server. Of course, it should be just ELS. OK. It's having some problem. OK. Anyway. Uh, what can I do actually for this? Uh, in here, because we have a DNS, right? We have a DNS, right? So what can I do? Remove this one. I don't need this. Because we have all this DNS, the uh, 192.168.1.4 is completely running DNS, right? 
So at this server, this is a, I, I, we know this is our DNS server number two, but it's not DNS yet. So just add the machine as a, as a regular client server. That way we add all other server, right? Click okay, click okay. So now only the primary DNS server. Okay, all right. So I'm going to add it again. Attempt to try, I'm attempting to again, just CLS. Okay. Oh, what of what it shows. Okay. Before I do that, one thing I have to confirm. What's the IP address, right? So the IP address of this one is accessible from this machine right now. So first I have to wait um at this one first. Um So first we need to ping it from, so from DS number one, we are we are checking, we are pinging the DS number two, which is 10.15.0. Sorry, 90.0.0.0. Uh, it's pingable, right? It's pingable. And NS lookup because we already created it. Manually we created DNS entry, right? 10.15.90.4. That's also showing here. That's fine. And on here from here, I need to check the DNS number one. From DNS number two, I'm going to ping the DNS number one. Ping 10. Dot, oh, sorry, it's um 192.168.1.4 as not pingable. What's going on? Okay, all right, all right, I understand because the DS number zero one when it's added with the domain. If you can look at here, the firewall is causing the issue. See, the firewall is on, domain firewall is on, so we have to turn off the firewall. Okay, okay, it's temporary. You have to remember every time. It's 2016, that's why. But for 2019, one time you did, everything is done. Okay, so um, it's turn off now. Let's 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 ping it again from, from here. Okay, so now it's working, right? Now it's working. And NS lookup and 192.168.1.4. Also showing everything working fine. And then Pinning the active directory of the dot one dot two. Okay, one dot two is pinging and NS lookup one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot two. So NS lookup also resolving DNS from the DNS number two machine and from the active directory. I'm going to ping. The DNS number two, ping one, uh, sorry, 10 dot, 15 dot, zero dot. So not zero actually, it's 90, 90 dot four is pinging. Okay, and then let's look up. Why I'm checking this look up? Because we already manually created a DNS entry. That's why I'm looking, checking 10 dot, 15 dot, 90 dot four. Yes, it's also showing. So everything looks pretty good. Uh, now we can add them. Okay. So now, administrative user, or you, if you have your own administrative account, and which is which user has your uh, like if you have a your own administrative 
user account. And if that user has a has a uh, administrative privilege access, then you can use that one. But um, in my case, I don't have any. I didn't create it yet, so that's why I'm using the domain administrator. Administrator add ELS dot ELS. You actually not you don't need to write because it all is found. Uh, uh, you are administrator because ELS already there. Administrator, or you can type at uh, ELS dot com. It, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, A-D-M-N-S-T-R-A-T word, Mr. OK. OK, so welcome to the domain. OK, and close and restart. All right, is it starting right now? And on the domain controller, come here and see on the activity users and computers, just refresh it. Now we have two, right? This one is also here, see? It's created automatically. So it seems like both are working fine. And now, so uh, this one is powering on. So until it's powering on, I can do one. On the DNS number one, DNS number one, make sure I have everything working fine. John transfer, see now it's showing. And here, John transfer is showing correctly, okay? So it's gonna show. And here, See the authority and don't transfer. Everything is showing very nicely. And here, John transfer. Authority is 10, one seconds. We didn't use the default one. Just only this one is not showing, right? So you can add it, add. The second one, which one is this one? ELS.com, right? So the sixth one, delay, this one, you can okay. Come and notify in here, you can say, okay. Apply and okay. All right. So look like everything is here. Everything looks good. Start over three is good. And John transfer is good. Everything is good. Everything is ready. Now let's see the status. So this one is also part on. So I'm gonna log in now as a. Previously I logged in as a what? As a local administrator because machine name with the administrator, right? Now I'm going to log in as a. ELS. Domain administrator. Double click on it. It's gonna open here. All right, it's pretty quick. So this one, okay. All right. So we are we are very close. And tools, DNS, and I'm going to minimize the server manager because I don't need server manager feature right now. I just need a DNS. That's it. Okay, DNS is open, and I'm going to pin up here. Pin. Okay. So right now in here it's not showing anything, right? So the same way we're gonna create it. New zone, next. 
So right in here, we, we're gonna create a second that is your click next, ELS.com, click next, and the, specify the master DNS server. So master DNS server IP address 10, sorry, 192.168.1.4. Which is this one, right? Next and finish. And if you look at here, it shows cross, right? It's okay. And reserve lookup zone, new zone, click next. Secondary zone, click next, next. And 192.168.1. Oh, nothing, just one up to one. Click next. And the uh, 192.168.1.4, which is our master one, right? The master or primary DNS at the finish. Uh, so we have added one is uh, new tune, next, secondary, next, next, 10.15.90.4. Oh, sorry. It's 90, okay, 192.168.1.4, which is our master DNS, right? Primary DNS. Click next and finish. We have two, we have this, and this one is not showing, but eventually it's gonna show. So 36, it's 30, right? How come it's 30? Oh, it's 36 here, see? Now start of authority is 36. And in here it says start of authority is 36. So everything is same, everything is working fine. So now I'm going to create a test one. New host record. Okay. Where I'm going to create on the so from the first. This is my primary DNS, right? Here I'm going to create host a record for, say for example, test, uh, test what? Test NY, test NY. Test NY, that means our remote site and IP address is 10.15.90. Say for example, uh, 199, uh, or say 99, 99. Create a prettier, okay, add, okay, it's successfully added. So refresh. Refresh, you can see here, right? Fit your record. Okay. So the um, ls.com shows test and y, right? And this one, right? 10.15.90.99. Test and Y. So this is the FQDN, right? Okay. And come here. Refresh it. See here? It's automatically come to the second DNS, which is our New York site. And if you look at on that, this one, just refresh it. It's also showing here, right? and right click on it and try to do the NS lookup. So now I'm going to test it, right? So for testing, I said NS lookup. Oof, my mouse is giving me a hard time.
All right. So this one is dissolving from the primary one, see here, and it's resolved. But if the primary one is down, what's going to be happen? That's we need to test. Um, it's replicated. We proved already it's replicated. But now we want to test if the primary side is down. So how we can test it, say, for example, if I can disconnect the network for the primary one, that means it's down, right? So I'm going to disconnect a deed option and going to disconnect the network. Okay, this is the network, right? So I'm going to just disconnect the network, save. So if, if this one is disconnected network means what? This one is not gonna show anymore. It's, within, within short time, it's gonna be disconnected, okay? So in here, I'm going to check it again. It should be resolved through the secondary one. Okay, one more thing. Okay, in here, actually, uh, the answer number two, I, I did another mistake, which is I didn't complete the DNS, you remember, I just take it out from here. Uh, the IP and DNS name, you remember? In here, properties. So in here, we have to put it 10.15.90.4. And because this is the secondary one, that's the secondary IP is as a primary DNS and alternative is the primary, the, the main master one is the second alternative for this one. Only just accept this, exceptional for this one. But all other client server, you can use any one. 192.168.1.4, right? Okay, and okay, and close, and close, and running. See, now it's, now it's showing from where? Previously, it was shows from, see, it was reserved from the master DNS server, but now master DNS server is down. Now it's showing from where? It's showing from the secondary one. So that's why it's, it's a fault tolerance plus redundant. So we prove all of the action or um, function of DNS, primary DNS server and the secondary DNS server. And that's all for now. So actually this one is disconnected. I'm going to uh, edit. And, okay, I can connect it later on anyway. So we proved it. Everything is working fine, right? And okay, this firewall also gonna make problem. Make sure you turn off all, all, all of those all those things. Otherwise, it's gonna be create a problem for you. Okay, so everything looks good. Everything working fine, and everything working smoothly. That's all. That's all for today. And thank you. Thanks for watching. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel and don't forget to click the bell icon to get my next video updates. Um, thank you. Thanks for watching.